Hey guys and girls, Sunday night. It's become a bit of a ritual now. It's become a bit of a habit and we're going to talk about that. But firstly, I was actually, I was going to, apo to apologise for a uh, language and I had a couple of people, I even had someone uh, anonymously call during the week and I get hammered all the time on social media, but I just don't engage in it. Um, and so here's the deal with me with sometimes when I use profanity. Um, do I think that swearing is immoral? No. Um, I think that lying to people is immoral. I think that ripping people off is immoral. I think that backstabbing people is immoral. I think that um, hoping that people screw up is immoral. I think that fucking people over is immoral. But no, I do not think that if you're speaking to someone the way that you normally are without changing yourself and using the occasional swear word is fucking immoral. I don't, okay? So let me put that out of the way. And I'm not saying that you should swear. All I'm saying is that when I'm speaking generally with colleagues, with people I work and coach, that's the way that I speak. So it's not like I put on, oh, Tom's good side. It's just the way that I am. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. And um, it, it is, that's what it is. Number two, you know, one of the things that I notice about really great people is that they've got confidence, but they don't have arrogance. And it's a fine line. To me, being confident is not about walking into a room thinking that you're better than other people. Being confident is about walking into a room and not being addicted to what people think about you. That, that to me is what's being confident. And I have to tell you, if you put your happiness in the pockets of other people, you will always be stressed, anxious, and unhappy because you cannot control what other people think of you, but you can control of what you think of you. So I would tell you the best way to get someone's approval is to not need it in the first place. The other thing I want to talk to you a little bit about today is um, turbulent times. And I was on a flight um, and I fly, look, for the last decade, I've f flown more than most people that I know. I've, I mean, I've been away over 100 nights a year for the last decade. So I'm on planes all the time. And one in every 30 flights is what I call very turbulent. Not many of them, but every so often, you get a flight that gets a little bit scary. But because I've been on so many flights, I know the outcome. And the outcome is that it lasts for five, 10 minutes sometimes, and things go back to normal. But on this flight, the other day, I realized that there are three categories of people on a flight. You've got the first group, and they're the ones that get scared. They get nervous, and you can see that they're very frightened. It's in their eyes and it's in their body language and they look around and um, you can tell they're very anxious. Then you've got a second group of people and what they do is that they get scared but then they sort of try and calm themselves. They, they, they sort of get um, firm on the chair and they close their eyes and they go inward. They try and disconnect from it all, distance themselves from the turbulence. And then you've got a third group. It's only a small group. And the plane is normally peppered with a few of these people. And what I notice about these people is that they're the ones that show leadership to their fellow passengers. They'll notice that people are uncomfortable and what they do is they seem to turn to the person next to them and say something along the lines of, look, it's quite normal. In five minutes, it's going to be okay again. And you notice that they take a lot of the sharpness and a lot of the fear out of the people around them. And I've got to tell you, we live in turbulent times. At work and in life, you go from the heights of exhilaration to the depths of depression in 24 hours with shit that happens. And I have to tell you, what I love is that you see people that are centered and they go back to that center. And what they do is they've got a sense of calmness in a time of turbulence. And that is what I call is leadership. And 
The place is dying for leaders in business and in life. The next thing I want to talk to you about is, so what do I do for a living? I work as an exec at News Corp. I have for 12 years or 11 and a half. Uh, I run an auction business. Um, I, do a, I have a speaking business. I do training. I've got an online internet marketing business, realestategym.com.au. I'm a video blogger. Um, but the thing that I'll tell you is that overall, most of my life is in the self-improvement business about getting the best version of people. And one of the things that saddens me is that I know in my heart that most people that set a resolution on January 1 are back to normal by January 15. Think about it. Gymnasiums, fitness first, anytime fitness, they make their living out of people joining the first two weeks of the year. And then they know that most of these people will not be using the facilities in two to three months. I know that people go to conferences and they try and reinvent themselves you know, the day after the conference, but I also know that within a couple of weeks, they're back to normal. So I'm just gonna share with you the reason why. And there's clear evidence and research to suggest that this is the reason why people struggle and is change is hard. It's as simple as that. If it was easy, think about it, everyone would be ripped Everyone would have a $6 million house, would have the best relationships, would have $5 million in the bank, and they would be on holidays for 20 weeks of the year, and life would be beautiful. But it's not the case. People struggle with finances, with relationships, with work. And it's because that change is hard. And I've got to tell you that will, having you know, a strong will and discipline is not enough. What I've got to tell you is this, habits and rituals are the secret. Nothing changes until you change your daily ritual. You better accept that you are a result every day, every week of the brain tattoo rituals and habits you have in your life. The time you wake up, you know, what you do when you wake up. Think about everything that you do is like an automatic pilot. Wake up, brush your teeth, have something to eat. You drive to work basically the same way every day. You're on autopilot. And what I can tell you is that if you change your habits, you change your life. So I want to share on this video four or five really amazing habits. They've been game changers for me. They're game changers with some of the close clients I work with. Here they are. The first one is join the 5 a.m. club. It is a great club to be part of. The second one is, remember this, daily exercise. It changes the way you feel. It gives you energy. It's got chemicals that make you feel happy. I don't even know what it is. Dopamine, serotonin, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what it is. But all I can tell you is that when you exercise, you're happier, you're less stressed, you sleep better, you're optimistic. The next thing is, have what I call, don't worry about a 25 to-do list thing. Have three MITs, most important tasks. Remember this, something unimportant done well does not make that thing important. So select things that are high value activities that you need to do that day and just stick to those. The next thing I was going to say to you is have an attitude of gratitude. Remember this that there are others that would be praying to be in your situation right now. Think about the person in Turkey. Think about the people that have died in Turkey or in France. Think about the people that were out that night partying. Think about, they would swap to be in your spot right now. Their relatives and family and friends, they would swap to be in your spot right now. So be grateful. And you know when people say, oh, look at the things half full, half, up, half full, half empty. Man, just be grateful that you've got a glass in the first place. Just be grateful about having a glass in the first place. Whether it's full or half empty, just be grateful. This is personal to me. This means a lot to me because I've gone through pain. I've gone through dark times. I've gone through periods where I've spent time at a chemo ward, right? So in 2006, I spent plenty of time in a chemo ward. 
having various treatments. And I've got to tell you that some of the best gifts in life come badly wrapped. I don't know what it is. Your divorce, your loss of a loved one, your financial hardship, you're losing your job, being stabbed in the back by someone. I don't know what your pain is. But what I can say to you is this. Sometimes when things are falling apart, they're actually coming together. Remember that. And I'm also going to tell you that difficult roads lead to beautiful destinations. And I'm also going to say this to you. This is an affirmation that I wrote down every day for two and a half years. My current situation is not my final destination. Remember that. The last thing, guys and girls, I'm going to talk to you about is that um, I just, ultimately, I just want the best, I just want people to bring the best versions of themselves to work and in life each day. Um, and I just think to myself that before you go off and diagnose yourself with anxiety or, you know, depressions, ask yourself first, am I surrounding myself with assholes? Because they're going to affect your behavior. Remember that. The next thing I'm going to tell you is definitely model yourself on excellence because you become excellent. Model yourself on fuckwits, you become a fuckwit. But I'm going to say this to you. Be open to feedback. Listen to others. Do your inner work about getting better. Get feedback from experts. Sure, have a mentor. But don't take advice about getting rich from someone who's selling you financial packages that's broke. Don't take advice about relationship success from someone that's got 25 bad relationships underneath their belt. And whatever you do, yes, listen to feedback, listen to other people, but if someone tells you to change yourself, tell them to fuck themselves. See you next Sunday.